understand. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. If everybody can take their seats. Wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Um, I'm very pleased to introduce the Lord Mayor of Copenhagen, Frank Jensen. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, and thank you for so many are joining us for this afternoon press conference. Uh, I think one of the most important co uh, press conference for this uh, mayor's summit here in, in Copenhagen. A very warm welcome to this press conference to all of you and especially to our young activists both here in the panel and in the press room here. The young generation have played a crucial role in raising awareness of the crisis of our climate and the need for taking action. It is a great, of great importance that we foster dialogue between the generation of tomorrow and the decision makers for, of today. Not only dialogue, but also invite them to make concrete actions together with us in the cities. So I'm very, very honored also to be here at Stage Together with my fellow colleagues, the mayor, from Paris, Anna Hidalgo, uh, our CEO chair, onto this C40 summit, have uh, finished, where the mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Cassetti, takes over. We have also the mayor from Freetown, Aki Zoya, and we have the mayor from Seattle, the mayor Durkan. So welcome to my fellow colleagues also here in, in the panel. And uh, yeah, give them a big round of applause. The Danish uh, Climate Ambassadors, Friday for Future, and the Zero, uh, uh, the zero Hour is also here. And uh, we invited uh, 10 youth organizations to take over City Hall yesterday, and we invited representatives, at least 10 organizations and networks, to use the City Hall as a setting for a debate on how to stop the climate crisis. Today, they will share their conclusions, and I have been looking very, very much forward to, to hear from you what you have done the last two days at my city hall. Therefore, I'm uh, honored to be, a com be here in the panel together with my, my colleagues, and of course, uh, the representatives, all the, the youth climate activists. Um, the Danish climate, oh, that's the same page, I think. Got a new one. During the last year, the young people around the world have created an even greater awareness among world leaders on the importance of climate change, and all things uh, demanding faster and fair transformation uh, to renewable energy, cleaner air in our cities, cleaner water, fight plastic in our nature. It is clear to everyone today why the young climate activists all over the world are crucial and important in order to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. I am so impressed how you, the Friday of the future, has succeeded in setting the green agenda, not only for a new generation, but for all of us. Not many of us were able to predict the significance of the Friday climate strikes. As city leaders, I believe that we need to carry that message forward. Young people have the greatest stake in how we respond to the crisis, and they need to be involved in the solutions that we are putting forward, impl implementing by cities. Many young people are anxious for the climate crisis, worried for their future on the planet marked by climate change. That is not fair. And as leaders, we have an obligation to listen and to act. I sincerely believe that we have a shared mission together with the young climate activists. The C40 mayors, the young leaders, share the same goal of urgent and ambitious climate actions. There is only one cure to the worries of the young generation, and that is to act. And to act together to 
create the future we want, cities, and especially the C40 cities, play a very important role. As cities are responsible for specific solutions, environmentally friendly district heating, public transport, bicycle infrastructure, clean water, climate protection, and waste management, organic food for the children and the elderly, just to mention a few areas which we in the cities are delivering green transition. There is no need to wait. We have the solutions already. We are here in Copenhagen to share the solutions and to inspire each other. Copenhagen was among the first cities to have our own young climate ambassadors. They are public school students who are both educated in climate change and educated to share their knowledge and to inspire other young people. We have also an official youth council, which is an official recognized stakeholder. So going forward, we have a good starting point for engaging the young generation. I look forward to learning more about your message from the youth takeover at City Hall. We need to build coalition between mayors, governments, businesses, and citizens. And you, need it, you are needed to be partner with us. Because we can, we can solve the climate crisis if we act together. But we have to act together. On this note, let me introduce one of the climate ambassadors from my city, Copenhagen, Selma de Montgomery Nørgaard. The floor is yours. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you. My name is Salma, and I'm a climate ambassador and youth activist and organizer in Friday for Future Denmark. Yesterday, we had a youth takeover at the city hall. Hundreds of youth and some mayors from all around the globe came and discussed solutions on the climate crisis, which could be implemented on a local level. Feeling the, feeling the participants in Feeling the participants' enthusiasm made a huge impression on me. We collaborated and came up with a lot of good solutions. But enthusiasm is one thing, action another. The, the takeover was focused on, on three challenges. The lack of climate knowledge and education. How to create climate careers and jobs in the future. And the exclusion of, of young people and their access to power. During the takeover, three things was made clear. One, it, it, is in, in, it is inevitable that if we do not act now, if we do not act radically and ambitiously, and if we do not contribute to the common good and act together, the world as we know it today will die. Two, it is impossible for us to act in unison if we exclude an entire generation from contributing with solutions to the climate crisis. We should be a part of the decision process when decisions regarding our future are being taken. Three, it is also impossible for us to act and create equitable climate action if we do not recognize that rich Western countries, the colonizers, has an enormous responsibility to, towards the countries that's most impacted by the climate crisis. To see climate action, we need to see climate justice. Solutions was developed and collected in the booklet that you all have been given. The youth of the world came together and decided one thing. We, as youth, want formalized youth engagement and it should be a requirement for all C40 cities. When giving over the chairmanship, we want the Youth Summit in Copenhagen to make a formal request to the chair of the C40 cities, Mayor of Los Angeles, to implement a program where all C40 cities must create a youth climate council. The council should be organized in a global youth council.
add um, this this C40 at this C40 meeting we created the foundation for equitable climate action, but we still have yet to build on it. I hope that you will not forget your responsibility towards the earth and all future generations to come, and all the youth, gen all the young generations already here. And don't you dare turn your back on us like so many times before. Go build on the foundation we have created. Go act. Thank you. Now, now, thank you. Thank you, Selma. Um, I'd like to invite Alexandria Via Senor from the, the USA. Okay, there we go. Um, hi everyone, thank you so much for having me here today. This week, youth from all around the world came to Copenhagen to make our voices heard on the climate crisis. Our presence here, alongside the leading mayors of the world, symbolizes the purpose of all of our collective work, and that is to safeguard the planet for future generations. However, we, the youth, are not just consultants, or even co-creators of the policies and plans crafted this week. We are the conscience and the moral voice calling on all of you to do the right thing, and to do the right thing quickly and urgently. This week, my peers and I developed a platform going forward on which education stands as a top priority. Our movement will not grow, policy will not be developed if um, will not be enacted and changed and will not occur without factual, universal knowledge of the climate crisis. Not only do our young people need to be taught the basic science of the greenhouse effect and how our planet is warming up, but we need to be taught the climatological and economic and social impacts of climate change itself. And then we need to adapt and adapt and learn how to. Our future world will look very different than the world we're living in today. And right now, we are not being prepared for it at all. Every aspect of our life cycle will be affected by the climate crisis. Our family structures, where we live and where we go to school, our career paths, and even how we form our own families and our adulthood are going to drastically change. We cannot wait to bring knowledge of the climate crisis to those who will be impacted the most in the future. It must happen now, and you must be the ones to do it. I am urging each one of you to make climate education a top priority in your cities, educational structures, and institutions. We can't take action if we don't know or understand why we're being called to act in the first place. And without the necessary action, we won't be able to mitigate the climate crisis and stabilize our out of control, runaway Earth system. The youth of the planet are counting on you to save our future and the planet for future generations. So let's move forward from this conference with knowledge and education at the top of every city's 2020 agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd now like to give the floor to um, Anne Hidalgo, Mayor of Paris, and C40 Chair to respond. Thank you so much. Thank you, and uh, I'm very happy to be here with you, with my colleagues, mayors, and uh, with the young leaders and uh, activists in this room. Thank you so much. This is the last day of our summit, but since the first one, we have engaged in a conversation with the youth delegation here in Copenhagen. And I'm very glad to say that this will probably be one of the main political takeaway from the C40 summit. How rich, how energizing, how powerful this exchange of ideas has been. It is not the first time 
In most of our cities, every Friday, young people march to ask the right to a climate safe future. I marched with them in Paris. I followed their progress. Young people got it plain and simple. Our system is not sustainable. Climate change is unfair. Our economic model destroys humanity and the planet. What young people ask is clear. Their demand to tackle climate change and inequality in the same time. Because inequality is not less of an emergency. We won't be able to solve one problem if we were not addressing the other. Mobilization does not weaken. On the contrary, it is growing. It is our responsibility to take action to create the conditions for a collective change, for sure. I won't be an easy task. I believe we need to disrupt the way we used to take decisions in the past. If states cannot react to the impressive raising of the climate movement, cities should be doing so. We did it in the past. We didn't wait for states to protect the Paris Agreement by committing to the 1.5 target uh, degrees Celsius target with the C40 deadline 2020 program. When the US president decided to leave the Paris Agreement together with Michael Bloomberg, Eric Garcetti, and American mayors, we said together, and the American mayors said, we're still in, in. All of you here are speaking the truth, and please do not ever dupe uh, the power of the truth. When I return to Paris, I will meet once again with a representative of the students' movement to continue this dialogue. Many of you are strongly engaged young women. Uh, and as you know, I launched the Women for Climate Initiative in this network, in the C40 network. We support climate hearings working on concrete action on waste reduction, sustainable fashion, urban farming or energy. I will be happy to enlarge the Women for Climate platform. I will ensure that the initiative supports your training because we want you to succeed. You want to act in the interest of the majority of people. So you seem to me perfectly qualified for the democracy and to save the democracy, not just the planet also the democracy. Be sure that your voice will be heard. Be also sure that we will fin find together the way to make the Global Green New Deal, La Nouvelle Alliance Verte. We want this uh, Global New Deal as a reality. I'm looking forward to working hand in hand with you for the future we want. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Hidalgo. Uh, next, I'd like to invite Hilda Flavia Nakabuye from Uganda to speak. Thank you. Thank you. I am Hilda and I am the founder of Fridays for Future in Uganda. I am missing my classes right now, same way I have missed them for the last six weeks to create climate awareness. It's not a surprise because I once missed three months of school due to the effects of climate change we experienced in my family and community. And my father wasn't able to raise my tuition fees. I am a victim of this whole climate crisis, and I am not ashamed to say so. After the massive effects of climate change in my home village, the heavy rains, the strong winds that washed away our crops leaving the land bare, the constant dry spells that left the streams dry, my parents had to sell off our land and livestock 
to sustain our lives. And when the money was over, it was a question of survival and death. I am lucky that I'm still surviving and I will I am lucky that I am still surviving and I'll not take this chance for granted because people are dying every day. I made a decision to protect the only place I call Earth. And by this, I joined fellow young activists all over the globe to protect our future through endless fights sacrifices we hustle our way because this is our future i will tell you that we are a generation of scared people but very ambitious very united very persistent and very good at action i sacrifice all my pocket money into a lecture cleanup activity I do to beat plastic pollution. And I need you to join I need you to join me in this fight. You two can make a decision now. If you are willing to join the youth in this fight, I want you to promise to us by standing up right now. Thank you. You can have your seats. <laughs> and for those that didn't stand up, I will tell you, your beds might be comfortable right now, but not for long. You will soon feel the same heat we feel every day. Be rest assured that youth from the other side of the world fighting for a safe future for you and for us all and are not about to give up yet. Let's move away from this summit with action. I thank you all. Thank you very much. I'd now like to give the floor to Luisa Neubauer from Germany. Hi, I am Luisa Neubauer and I'm shocked. Thank you so much for your words, Hilda. I think this is what the world needs to hear. And maybe as a remark, if you plan to report on this today, Please listen to Hilda and report on this. Last year in December, I met Greta at the UN Climate Conference in Poland and decided to bring the Fridays for Future movement to Germany. Since then, we have been organizing for 10 months, asking our government to take action. Because unlike others in other parts of the world, we are indeed the lucky ones. We are the privileged ones. And we carry enormous responsibility for everyone out there. During the last 10 months, we've not only become experts in organizing, but we've become experts in listening to empty words and to hearing empty promises over and over and over again, listening to our leaders promising something and not actually planning on ever sticking to it. That is painful. This is painful because we know of people like Hilda. We know that we actually just asked to grow old on a planet that can provide livelihoods for all of us, no matter where we are born. 
And it's painful to hear leaders failing us over and over again when the only thing we ask for is just to grow old. Coming to the C40 Summit has been a turning point in this. It is for the first time that I listened to a leader that I trusted would actually take action and that seemed actually keen on moving forward. I'm sorry to tell you that you carry enormous responsibility and I'm not sure if you know how enormous this is. The, green, the global Green New Deal is not only the most ambitious piece of urban climate policy there is, but it's, only the prom it's also the promise to people like us here, to us everywhere in the world striking for the climate and organizing for action, that our voices are being heard. But it can't stop there. It can't just remain the most ambitious piece of urban climate policy. It needs to be the most successful piece of urban climate policy. And, and that's the most important part of this, the most well-known part of urban climate policy. The Global Green New Deal is basically the time when people stop waiting for others so they would start. It's the time that leaders chose to stop waiting and started acting when there was still time. And it's the point where people decided to go ahead even though they knew others were even doing worse. And we need you to make this the best known piece of policy there is in the world. I dream of this time when I would talk to leaders and they wouldn't tell me, oh, have you heard of the US? They didn't act, so we won't. But they would tell me, hey, have you heard of LA? They acted, so we might just as well. This is what you need to do. And if there's one thing you need to do now, apart from sticking to your promises and introducing a youth council, it's understanding yourself not just as a political force, but as a political voice that everyone needs to hear about. We ask you to carry the voices of us young people to the boards, to the political powerhouses, to the places where decisions are being made, to tell the stories of Hilda and us who are looking at you, waiting for you to rise up to this challenge. And we are watching you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'd like to give the floor to uh, Yvonne Akisoya, Mayor of Freetown. Where do I start? This has been an incredible few days. I had the opportunity to meet with Louisa, with Hilda, with Salma at the start of this engagement. Listening to them and knowing that I myself have a 20 year old and a 23 year old has been inspiring, it has been challenging but perhaps above all, it's really strengthened my personal resolve to make sure that we don't let you down. What Hilda described is the story of so many people in the global south as it's called. Whether it's Latin America, or it's Africa, or it's South Asia, climate change isn't just a theory. It's not something that is topical, that some people choose to speak about every so often. It's something that's impacting people's lives on a daily basis. Hilda calls me to just take my mind back to our most recent flood. We had two, this rainy season, two sort of these extreme conditions, extreme weather events. On the second one, which was actually the, the smaller there were four deaths in one family, all of them young people, a six-month-old baby, a seven-year-old, a 16-year-old, and a 22-year-old. They were carried away by the water. This is happening daily. 
And what we need to do now, as the C40 cities, is to assure you, the young people, that you've come to the right place. We may not have done enough to date, but I can tell you, I don't think there's a single mayor who's been at this Congress who's going to be leaving here without a complete determination to deliver on these promises. We're not going to wait for the national governments. We haven't in the past, and we won't now. You've talked about information and education, and that's really important. It's important that we get this message out. It's important that the education happens in the schools, but it's also important that we really take over the airwaves on a sustained basis with the facts. Yes, there will be those who will counter. Yes, there'll be the narrative of the net deniers, but it really, really, really is not going to be a reason. That is not going to be a reason for us to do otherwise. Over the course of these two days, for somebody who ran for office because of the environment, I've been surprised about how much I have learned and I consider myself to be somebody who's aware. And what I've learned has made me feel like yesterday wasn't soon enough. And I really believe that that's going to be true of us. So we're making commitments um, as C40, as an organization, which I'm not yet a part of, or am I? <laughs> um, but we're certainly making a commitment as individuals. In Sierra Leone, we will adopt these policies. We are already doing a lot, but we will do more. If there's one message that I'm going to be leaving Copenhagen with, it is the fact that not a single person, not a single one of us, whether we're in the South and our emissions are lower, yes, I accept that, and we are on the receiving end of the impact of what is going on in the West, but we also need to ensure that we are minimizing our footprint, even if it's just as part of making sure we're amplifying the messages. We've got a long way to go, but we actually have to start now and be absolutely committed to taking it all the way. So young people, young people who are out there taking over City Hall, know that you've got partners. We're not letting go. We're not leaving you on your own. It won't be false promises, not from this group. We're doing this for real. We're doing it together. The future we want is a future that gives you hope. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I'm pleased to give the, word, the final words to Jenny Dirk and Mayor of Seattle. Thank you so much. Um, I am here representing uh, Eric Garcetti, who was called away because of the fires near Los Angeles. And how ironic it is that he who is here for C40 and the incoming chair had to leave early because of the devastating effects of climate change around Los Angeles. So I thank him for his leadership and Mayor Haldago, thank you so much for your leadership um, and for your vision, not just for our organization, but showing us how you can make it real in Paris. Um, for your Women for Climate program, empowering young women, paving the way for C40 to do the same. Your dedication is inspiring to all of us, so thank you so very much. I also want to thank the young people out in the room and here. Um, I'm not sure my friend Eric Garcetti did me a favor by letting me speak after these voices. Um, and I think what we heard today, and I think most profoundly from Hilda, is that climate crisis is not about changing comfort. It is about survival. It is making sure that if we believe in justice, that justice must start today and now. This week, for me, it was humbling and a great opportunity to meet the young climate activists from around the world. They both push us to be better and give us hope that we can be better. 
I want to thank them and thank all my fellow mayors who were here from around the globe. Um, it is inspiring for me as mayor to get out from our city where we deal with all the problems day to day and meet and see what the challenges are everywhere, but knowing that if we lift above those challenges and work together, if we make sure our national governments cannot define who we are or how we will respond, that together we can make a difference. Though this was a short time, we were able to engage in a really honest and genuine discussion about our joint vision for a more sustainable and just world. And knowing that the impacts have not been felt fairly and that environmental justice means that our response must also be just. This is just the beginning as mayors. We need to strive to bring more young people in. This should be one of many meetings of this kind. It definitely will not be the last. The fact that the mayor had to leave us does not mean that he does, was not here with us in spirit. And he has asked me to tell all of you that following the great discussion we have had and that he has had, one of his first acts as chair will be to direct the C40 to create a global youth initiative. And it's important to know this idea comes not from us mayors, but from the youth themselves. Um, to bring youth together, to inspire themselves, but to inspire us as leaders all over the world is key to this. Working with the youth climate movement will be a key part of the next phase of C40 under the next chairmanship of Mayor Garcetti. And that couldn't be more needed because I believe that only by involving young people in the heart of creating a global Green New Deal that we will be able to go far enough and fast enough and to create the future that we don't just want, but that we need. In our city, there's often an activist saying, never about us without us. Um, and that's what we heard from the youth from all over the world today. I have been so inspired to be able to sit and hear the stories, but also to know the impatience is real. Um, every mayor should be able to benefit from this experience. I know that when I met Jamie from my hometown of Seattle, I've been watching her and seeing the difference she has made, not just in my city, but has uh, inspired people throughout. Climate activism is not a choice. It is a necessity. We know, I sit here, like my friend, the mayor of Freetown, we both have children about the same age. I would not have run for office had they had not been so impatient about how the world needed to change, about how their future was on the line, and how our generation had let them down. It is a moral necessity for us to act. We know that you need to push us, and we know you will continue to be impatient. And that is your job. Our job is to listen, to do more, and to try to act. We must mobilize, but we must include. We must remember the voices that cannot be in a room like this, that cannot speak up because they are challenged in their very day of trying to survive, that they may not know what climate justice is, but they feel it in their lives every day. We must act for them as well. And by bringing youth from around the globe to us to center our work on them, we know that we can unite together to make a difference. So I would just maybe, it's probably out of order, Mr. Mayor, Lord Mayor, but if all the young people could stand again so we could applaud you.